Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be working with the wax pot um, and just showing you different tips and tricks for how to utilize it and the wax inside of it. So the first thing that you notice guys is that I am actually using a paint stick. I know a lot of times to get stir sticks they are a lot more pricey, but if you wanna save some money, you can always get you some paint sticks. I got mine on Amazon, gave me about 200 for I think $20. So that was awesome. Another thing guys, when you are getting your wax pot ready, if you have a five pound wax pot like I do, it can take you anywhere from about 15 to 20 minutes. But if you're using something larger, like a 10 pound wax pot, then it may take you 30 minutes to get your wax ready. So let's get started. So first what we're going to do is we're going to check the consistency of the wax. Everyone always wants to know, how do you know when the wax temperature is ready to be put on the client? You should have somewhat of a pancake batter. So as you can see here, it's nice and pancakey. That's what you want. And that is a word, guys. Pancakey is my word. <laughs> um, nextly, before you use the wax, you should be testing it at least on your hand or your wrist um, to make sure that the temperature is not too hot. All right, guys. It's very important, guys, when you guys are waxing that we're not double dipping, right? So you should be dipping your stick in the wax pot, waxing, putting the wax on the client, and then throwing that stick away. It is unsanitary, guys, for you to be double dipping. It's not healthy. The same thing with you guys thinking that you're flipping um, the stick over and using the other side. You have to remember, so like, if I am waxing someone, this hand has been touching their vagina, and then it touches the, the end of the stick. So thinking that you can just flip the stick over, it's unsanitary. There's vagina DNA all over the opposite end. So it's important to not double dip. The most expensive part um, of owning a waxing business is the wax. So the least you know you can do is make sure that you're being nice and sanitary guys. So do not double dip. Um, I like to always tell my new clients what I'm doing as I'm waxing them. And one thing that I mentioned to them is, you know, hey, do you notice that every time I'm done applying wax on you, I throw the stick away. Double dipping is you know, not sanitary. And if you ever go anywhere else besides here, you should keep an eye out for that. Because then that makes them like kind of appreciate it. And then they also think to themselves like, well, I'm not going nowhere else because they're like, this girl's doing, you know, the right stuff. So keep that in mind when you guys are building your clientele and seeing new clients. Another thing with the wax pot, guys, is um, I utilize the same wax for the face and body. Um, I actually have two wax pots. You can see my other five pound uh, wax pot here. This is my mermaid wax, and this is, if you can see it, bum, 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 my California blue wax that I like to use on legs, arms, and back. It's not to say that I don't like to use the California blue wax on the Brazilian. It's just that um, I find that the mermaid wax works very well in the bikini Brazilian, um, giving me less cleanups to do versus the California wax. And the hairs on like the back and the legs are completely different than the hairs on the bikini. So I just like to give myself um, less work to do. You know what they say, work smarter, not harder. And that's what I'm all about. You guys can find wax pots almost anywhere. I definitely will link a few um, places that I purchased pots from in the past um, down in the description below so that you guys can check that out and see for yourself what you like to do. Now, usually you would want wax at at least about a quarter of inch um, on the stick. So not 50%, but just about a quarter, guys. That way you're, you can control your wax where you're applying it. Now, if you're doing legs or back, a bigger area, it's okay to have a little bit more wax on the stick. So when you're going into the wax pot, guys, think of it as like taking a scoop of cereal. That's the best way I can describe it. You go in for your cereal, you put it on your spoon and you pick it up. Now, before you get out of the wax pot, you should be twirling right away. Most people take the wax up and then twirl. By the time you do that, everything's dripping. The purpose of twirling is to keep it all maintained on the stick. So let's do that again. Dip it in there like you're getting some cereal and twirl. And then that way you can manage it staying on your stick, guys. Okay? Let's do that one more time for those of you who are texting <laughs> or doing other things. Dip and twirl. And you'll get your wax on your stick. Now, let's say if I needed more wax for like a back service. I'm going to get rid of this stick and show you guys. So if I was doing a man's back, it would require a little bit more wax, right? And remember, in between your servicing clients, guys, you're always stirring your wax. 
because if you have your AC on it, it's blowing, it's cooling the top part of this and it's going to make it more tacky and you don't want that. So what I typically like to do sometimes is one way is you can do, do it a little twirl in there and you'll pick up more wax. Or you can always you hold this wax for about five seconds over the pot and dip it back in there for more wax as well. That's another way. So remember, we can twirl or we can hold it over the wax pot for five seconds, dip it back in and grab some more wax. Okay? Don't be afraid, guys. I promise you, it comes naturally when you practice it. This is the easy part, you know, practicing how to pick up wax because you can just kind of slide the wax right back in the pot. You don't really utilize much and waste it. Now let's move on to the face. So in most cases, when you're doing eyebrows, the best way to pick up wax is by gliding your small stick, small stick, across the wax. So pay attention. We put the stick here, we glide, and you clean off that side, clean off that side, and you cut that string. Okay, from here, guys, you should have wax only on one side. You see that? And you would commonly do this for the lip and the eyebrows. So let's look at that again. Don't mind, don't mind my wax ball getting messy. So we put the stick here, we glide, clean off one side, clean off the other, and then cut that string. It's okay if the string doesn't cut, but wax on one side. If the string doesn't cut, it's fine. Just make sure you don't leave it on the client's face. In most cases, you may do in other facial areas, such as the cheeks or the chin. And it's the same thing as doing um, the method of the big stick. Make sure that you're utilizing a quarter of the stick and going in and making just a little honeycomb. Okay. Now there are times when sometimes my mind slips and I forget to order um, medium sticks and maybe I have like two or three days of Brazilians that I won't get my sticks in time for. So I do utilize my small sticks, guys. I just make sure I give it a nice little swirl. And I mean, you can still get a Brazilian done. It may take me an extra three minutes because I'm using the small stick. But look at that. You can still pick up a nice amount of wax with a small stick. So that's pretty awesome. If you guys were going to do someone's nose, then I would recommend um, analyzing the nostril first because we're going to put, you know, the stick with wax in it. And then from there, you can determine how much wax you'll need on your stick. So in my case, I always just put the tip in there and give it a little twirl. So if someone with a smaller nostril, I probably would insert that into their nose. Someone with a larger nostril, depending on how large it is, I put a little bit more wax on the stick and then enter this in their nose. Typically, the smaller nostrils um, are females and the larger ones are males. But don't get me wrong, there's, you know... There's some males that have small noses and females who have big noses. It's all about analyzing. That's the most important thing, guys, is that you guys are analyzing before you're doing. Next, guys, we have cleaning up your wax pot. It's pretty easy. At the end of your shift, guys, you want to make sure that you clean the wax pot, which is fairly easy. So what you're going to do is you're going to crank up your pot a little higher. And what you can do is you can clean this with alcohol if you like, or if you have some type of wax cleaning solution, whichever you like to use. I'm going to use alcohol today. Remember, owning your own business, guys, you want to save as much money as possible. And in most cases, using alcohol is cheaper, right? Because if you're going to purchase a product that takes uh, the wax off of your wax pot, it probably costs you a little more. I usually use the little cotton round and just give it a nice scrub dub. And you can see the wax starting to come off. Just be careful that it's not too hot and you don't burn yourself. And you want to have a nice amount of alcohol on the cotton round. So you almost want it like saturated. And then I take a paper towel and I wipe the front of the wax pot and the sides. Because usually there's no wax there. I just do it for sanitary reasons. Make sure you're using um, a 90% alcohol or higher. That way you know you're killing those bad germs. And voila, wax pot's ready to go. You would take out your large stick and throw it away. I clean my wax pot quarterly, so about um, every three months, I take all the wax out and I clean the inside. 
Um, you can I utilize alcohol when I'm cleaning the insides, and I also utilize um, utilize mineral spirits, which you can get at Home Depot. Those are going to help you clean your wax pot and make it look brand new and shiny. And you guys know it's coming uh, close to the end of the year, so I'll definitely have a video showing you guys how I clean my wax pot from start to finish. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on that cool video. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you are a beginner waxer and this video helped you, then I am so happy. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the videos, comment the videos, stay tuned for weekly and daily content, and follow me on other social media platforms.